to welcome to the stage or to the podium Congressman Rodney Davis. Let's show appreciation to Rodney. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Just so you know, I did come here to try and grow a beard as nice as Rich's. <laughs> Clearly, even from the front row, you can tell it's not as nice. So I, I just really appreciate being able to speak to the Farm Bureau members again. And I, I look around and I see some of uh, the folks in, in my district. I see a lot of friends, a lot of folks that helped us actually craft two farm bills in my time in Congress. Farm bills that have given us great policies. Farm bills that have used the private sector to help us reduce the amount of money that we actually spend in Washington, D.C. And there are attacks all the time. There are attacks all the time on the programs that each and every one of you and the Illinois Farm Bureau worked with me on, on things like crop insurance. Crop insurance is a private, a public-private partnership that works to reduce the amount of taxpayer dollars that we spend responding to disasters in the ag industry, right? Why in the world would our colleagues attack it? I don't know, but it's that balanced approach that you all taught me when I first got elected nine years ago and got a seat on the House Ag Committee that we still continue to take to D.C. today. But that fight, that fight sometimes was with Republicans and Democrats when it came to the ag sector. Now the fight right now is with the Biden administration. It's with Nancy Pelosi. It's with Chuck Schumer. Just when I thought the ag economy couldn't be hit any harder, what we see here, President Biden and Speaker Pelosi and Leader Schumer's attack on each of you through their Build Back Broke program. This is a reckless tax scheme and it's gonna destroy some of the good agricultural policies that we put in place. Democrats, they know how unpopular this Build Back Broke program is because, uh, and, and while the tax provisions uh, were recently pulled from the House bill, they still haven't outright abandoned their plan to bankrupt our country with the changes in stepped up basis and also the estate tax. These were changes that we negotiated with President Trump with the Trump tax cuts. And oh, by the way, for those of you who heard a lot of commercials against me saying that I only cut taxes to benefit the wealthy, I think the IRS just put out something this week that said, you know, the majority of our Trump tax cuts went to the middle class families in this country. That's each of you. Give yourselves a round of applause for that. Thank you for helping us pass that. You know, this Build Back Broke program combined with the constant attack on, on the ag industry and each of you and what you do with reinstituting the new, uh, reinstituting the WOTUS rules that President Trump helped us pull back. These are the types of issues that we're going to continue to fight in Washington as Republicans from the great state of Illinois. This fight's not going to end when we take the majority back in Jan on January 3rd of 2023. We're going to have to continue to get the support of each and every one of you to make sure that we don't put a partisan litmus test on the, on the fight that we have. Let's put a right and wrong litmus test on what they're trying to do to what you do every day to feed your families. And frankly, and you don't get enough credit for it, what you do to feed the rest of the world. We've got issues with infrastructure in this country. We need to rebuild our locks and dams. I was really proud to see the first investment in the, locks and dam, in the lock and dam system along the Illinois and Mississippi River come from President Trump. At a time when I served under a different administration while in Congress, we saw zero dollars dedicated towards actually rebuilding and renewing our locks and dams along the Illinois and Mississippi rivers. Locks and dams that allow you the ability to get your crops and get your products out into the global marketplace. I was really proud when then OMB director at the time, before he was chief of staff, Mick Mulvaney called me and said, they're gonna invest in LaGrange. And you know what? I made him talk, tell me twice, just so I heard it right. But we've seen that update, we've seen that upgrade. And we've seen what an investment in our infrastructure like that can do. 
but we need promises, and this administration has given us zero promises that they're going to use any of the trillions of dollars that they now have at their disposal to, in, to actually implement the changes in the upgrades we need on the Mississippi and Illinois rivers. And frankly, if you look back at some of the same people who were in the, in the previous administration, the previous, previous administration, not the Trump administration, they're the same ones that are back now that didn't invest a single dollar in doing what all of us in this room knew was the right thing to do. You know, we've also got to do what we can to hold the administration accountable on the House Agriculture Committee through our oversight responsibilities. While I certainly wish Sonny Perdue was back as a Secretary of Ag, he hands down was my favorite uh, cabinet secretary that I had a chance to work with in my career in Congress. This is a guy who said what he, he, he said what he was going to do and he did it. He helped us lead this country through a pandemic. He helped each and every one of you be able to be sure that you were going to continue to provide the food and the fiber that's necessary to feed this great country and to feed this great world. Now we've got a fight on our hands when it comes to things like pesticide registration that I helped lead the fight in the last farm bill. We're going to continue to fight the far left priorities of this administration. And frankly, we're gonna fight the far left priorities of Speaker Pelosi and the House Ag Committee. We're doing that united, we're doing that together. And that's what I need. And that's what I ask from each and every one of you in this room. As we move forward to fight for you and to fight for what's best for Illinois' agricultural economy, we need you to continue to stand up as the Illinois Farm Bureau. Make your voice heard. Make sure that you are a loud voice in this state and do not be bullied by those who are in charge in state government. Do not be bullied by those who are in charge in the federal government. Stand strong for what we know and what we all believe is working and will work way into the future. Thank each and every one of you. May God continue to bless you and your families and may God continue to bless the greatest nation in the history of the world, the United States of America. Thank you.